we're on. We're on. Welcome, guys, to another episode of Brothers of Liberty or Brothers Cast. I'm Wasabi. I'm Smee, and we have somebody who rarely comes on here today. Yo. He is the avatar of monsters, the enemy of drywall everywhere, the living meme himself, who in his late 20s may have finally hit puberty. We have Kyle. <laughs> I am the leader of the Area 51 raid. Don't let anybody tell you different. The raid would not have been able to I thought that was Mr. Beast. Okay. I said I thought that was Mr. Beast. <laughs> I mean, it could have been him. I don't know. Depends on your source. All righty. me. All right, guys. What's on, the, what's on the list? What are we talking about today? I mean, I, we have some general topics, but these normally turn into the, the fun game of uh, get somebody going, which is where you purposely, Jacob will just purposely send me on a fucking what grinds my gears rant. Yeah, it happens. Well, let's start off with the fact that it's been about a week and a half since uh, the 20th. And how many executive orders does Biden have so far? Uh, Cubic, he set, he is, he set the record. Uh, well, he, he's absolutely, I don't have the number that. in front of me. But uh, what? L- go ahead and look it up real quick, uh, Wasabi. But Hang what's on, funny see. is, did any of you guys see the clip where one of the media people used his own words against him when talking to the, you know, like softballed it in, but was like, so Joe Biden said that he you shouldn't rule through executive order when Trump did three. Now he's done in the 30s. Does he view himself as some kind of benevolent dictator? You know, and, and like it was just like, brah, no, how dare you ask that question? Yeah. But, and, you know, guys in the, well, it's okay when we do it because we're just trying to get rid of the things that Trump did. I, right. think, the, I think the number right now, I'm, I'm seeing two different, um, one says like 37, another says 47, but the 37 was a couple days ago, so. Yeah, Probably. I I don't doubt that he doesn't even know half of the stuff that he's signing, that he got told to sign a bunch of stuff by, you know, the caretakers that put him as a president, because J- Joe Biden is one of those people that I think w- j- his whole goal in life was to become president and did, you know, signed his soul away to the the devil that is woke politics in order to get there. Yeah, he's been in the Senate since he was our age, and he hasn't done shit. And so you can see a career politician from a mile away, and he's kind of the epitome of that. So, Well, he's ran multiple times, yeah, and he's gotten – he's failed. Uh, yeah, he's he's just failed, like, repeatedly over and over again, plagiarism stories, all of the – lying about how he did in school, and then Up it's class. just – It's just so funny watching people wake up right now with, you know, like you're seeing all over Twitter, like, oh, man, I voted for Biden, but I'm getting to regret my vote. Or like, how could um, Biden, you know, cancel the Keystone Pipeline for all this shit? It's it's killing union jobs. We got told he wasn't a radical. Yeah. Cracking van and all that. Sorry, my, my daughter just locked herself in the closet. No worries. <laughs> hey, honey, can you come put Megan down? So, oh, Kyle, yeah. <laughs> so, Kyle, so, Kyle, tell me, what is your thought so far, specifically, on the 50 bajillion executive orders? I'll say I've mostly just been ignoring it. I mean, <laughs> I should be paying more attention, you know. I just kind of felt like I needed to take a break away from politics a little bit after the election. Like everything was just so high and I just kind of got burned out. So, I mean, me too. Like that many executive orders. It's like, what do I honestly need to say? Like, especially I, 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 is moral when I do it because I'm a good person. It's like, Oh, you're you're evil. Hitler thought that he was justified too. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, but that's the way it always is with Democrats, is they promise one thing and they get the media on their side. Like, there was a slight amount of criticism against 
Joe Biden and his executive orders from the New York Times, and the Democrats lost their collective shit oh, yeah. um, on the New York Times about it. And even then, they were like, we like what he's doing, but he should probably ease up on the executive orders all at once. And, you know, it's just like, dude, what did you think was going to happen? But if he lets up on the executive orders, how are we supposed to ensure that we can take over the world forever? Yeah, exactly. Well, well, well I mean, good guys. I mean, this is just kind of going along with, you know, I don't want to get into like super high conspiracy. Like he's been bought by the Chinese. He's doing what the Chinese want um, and all that kind of stuff. But he did put us back into the parrot climate accords and all this kind of crap. But it's just remarkable to me to see um, all of this, all, all of the media soft handedness with him so far. And then you're just, kind of beginning, and then it's. It, what's that? I go ahead. I was in our opinion. No, no, I, I think you were going to say the same thing I was. I would like to see what kind of ties his family has to Chinese these companies and what kind of monetary gain they could have because i don't think he's bought by china but i think that he knows that he and those that he loves will benefit if he increases china's standing in the world more than his loved ones will benefit if he protects america's standing in the world and well, i don't I mean, think that he has he has been bought by china yeah. like all of that stuff with hunter biden's laptop was showing that he was taking money from them yeah so but like I'm, I'm trying to give you know a little bit of the benefit of the doubt with it, with that, right? Right. We're but not it's... trying to be like the media was with Trump, where we're like evil devil Hitler. Even though I've said two of those three things already about him, but yeah, but have... I mean, it's a little bit different with people who don't like the guy because of you know, uh, I'm he they he's a, like I. Don't like him because he's a warmonger that lied our that helped lie us into Iraq. Uh, right. Has already put troops back in a, in Syria in a in, in an illegal occupation of their oil fields, huh? Um, and you want us to frack? We got to go take their oil. Well, I mean that that that's one of the things that it always kind of makes me giggle a little bit with li like the liberal types is in or the environmentalist types because they're and this plays into his executive orders you know when he shut down the keystone pipeline it's it's yes we need to be better for the environment yes we should try and work off of oil but we don't have the technology yet we can do things to develop the technology but we shouldn't be shutting down production and we shouldn't be shutting down improvements in the infrastructure on fossil fuels in the hope that in in five years five ten years we'll have something because we should be working parallel tracks to make fossil fuels as environmentally friendly as humanly possible and then we can move on to um and at the same time uh be doing all that other stuff right so I think the whole climate change shit that's more likely to be fixed by private industry than government. Like I, I think single handedly done more to fix the planet than anybody in government ever could. Well, so I, I also think that the hysteria on that is driven by people that don't understand the science and it's definitely pushed on by people that don't care that they're that they're upsetting people that don't understand the science. Right. Because it's not necessarily CO2 that's the problem, because CO2 can be used directly to help plants grow to feed more people on the earth. It's when right, you get like all CO2 of this levels. other pollution. <laughs> yeah, CO2 levels it's, aren't where they're supposed to be right now, according to the scientists, but we suddenly have way more trees. It's like, hmm, I fucking wonder what's yeah, going on there. Right. CO2 is... To figure that shit out, okay? It's not that complicated. Yeah, CO2 itself can be easily filtered out of um, the fucking environment. Like CO2 scrubbing from the atmosphere? Trees, dude. Plants. Yeah, yeah. Trees do it naturally. Right? Um, so, we also have to but it's, it's, it. it's kind of pricey. 
Right. But it's it was all of the other stuff that gets burnt off in a lot of cases because coal isn't necessarily clean. It has impurities. But if you right. can clean coal, it can produce CO2. You, If you pump CO2 in the atmosphere, that gives you more food for plants. While it may not be necessarily be the best option, it is definitely an option that helps a like growing population, which we haven't reached stagnation in population yet, and we probably won't until the end of this century across right. the board. So we're going to need more far- more food, more farms, more trees. How do we get that? Well, we need more CO2 for the shit to grow. Uh, I've right? been thinking the same. That's why it's funny that all of these same people that are like, we need to save the planet, uh, but we also need to, you know, l- way less humans and shit like that. It's like, well, you guys are just like fucking banking on this shit, to, like on everybody to die effectively. But yeah. the way the way you can do it better because is, you know, literally cleaning coal and nuclear power and do and start monitoring CO, CO2 and non-CO2 and then also start monitoring the balance between CO2 and plant life. And that's how we find the actual most environmentally friendly and human friendly way to go about things instead of just saying no fossil fuels kill half the pu- human pop- population. It's like, no, they won't. In fact, getting off of fossil fuels immediately would be extremely detrimental to human humanity. I mean, but Africa would know, Africa would die, yeah. India would right. die, yeah. and that's what's super funny to me. All these people, like you know, it's, it's the same cluster of people that don't think logically that are like, "Oh, the Western world is all white supremacists. We're killing the planet. Let's cut off all fossil fuels." And I'm like, you know, if you did, we did that, like we would be the only ones that would techno- technologically survive. <laughs> Right, like yeah. if they were living in poverty, I don't think that they would be pushing for the elimination of fossil fuels. Yeah, but it's I mean, it, an- but disgusting. like, like to, just to kind of backtrack, right? It's it's very funny because they shut down the Keystone Pipeline, and all of my liberal elite friends that are more like the city white collar, you know, liberals who just didn't like their sensibilities hurt by Trump type of thing. They were the ones that were like, oh, it's good. Well, if those jobs shouldn't, you know, shouldn't exist and if we're getting rid of jobs in bad sectors, well, we can move them to other shit. And it's like, yeah, but that's going to take fucking time, dude. You know, it's better that's gonna than take time. That, what are you, you going to do to those, those four, 10 to 40,000 people, these union workers that Joe Biden just cut their jobs from out from under them? That. Like what? Are, what's what's gonna happen? Are they just gonna wait till twenty fifty to start feeding themselves again? I so you know, and the government doesn't give a shit about those people. It's like, oh no, it's okay that we're killing these jobs because these people can just get jobs in this new sector. Um, yeah, but they don't have the they don't have don't the training, the infrastructure wait. for it's not there. The fucking there are no solar major solar panel factories that are just gonna randomly but start employing. Ten to forty thousand people in the Midwest in Wyoming, you know what I mean? There, that shit doesn't exist yet. Now we can build towards that, but it's not going to happen overnight. And these people that think it can just happen overnight are the kinds of people that are like suburbanites that haven't that don't work trade jobs. But what's what's super funny? I uh, just kind of like trying to avoid a bit the tangent that I can normally get on when it comes to the climate change stuff is Joe Biden, the union that backs those people that the, the union that those people work with would back Joe Biden and then, and can try to convince everybody, you know, their people to vote for Joe Biden. And then the first thing he does is turn his back on them. Of course he's Joe Biden. You know, they should have known better. (laughs) Are we really surprised by that? Well, to me, it's it's super funny. Then they're all pissed off, like, well, like, like even though this move was expected, we didn't think he would do it or in this way. It's like, what do you mean? You knew that he said this was going to happen. He it means said that, that it, complex thought. Like, like he said he was going on more than one occasion that he was going to stop. That it wasn't that he was going to ban fracking, but he was going to stop fracking on federal land. Okay, right. well. <laughs> Federal land outside of the South encompasses a whole lot of fucking land. 
especially mainly on the west coast but like the west coast and the northeast are like primarily federal land because of uh, mm-hmm. national parks i think i heard the in texas uh there's like, like 98 on private land yes it is but it will basically not affect texas which is just it's fantastic for me. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm moving to Dallas in like 539 days, so. Really? There's cool. that. Want to be a couple yeah, hours? I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, well, I, I want to move to Texas. Um, that's where I'm going to focus all of my, uh, my, once soon as I'm done with my current contract, I'm moving there and getting out of California. Yeah. I got out a few months ago, so. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'm, uh, it's just like, but I just can't, I can't understand all of these people that have been like the Democrats haven't been people for the working class since Carter, you know, NAFTA fucked over the working class and that was brought on by Bill Clinton, um, among many, many other things like Bill and then Obama wasn't for the working class. He was for the socialite city liberal that was like, oh, yay, we have a black president. The uh, only fucking thing that and- was the vote. <laughs> for the people at all. So, but these unions, I don't think they're going to get away with, you know, like supporting these Democrats anymore because it's, if Joe Biden is the radical centrist that people painted him to be during this election, I'm not that far left, but the first thing he does is cut thousands upon thousands of jobs. And yeah, but I mean, he's, not he's not that far left. He's kind of a corporate centrist. He it's he just... is on he is on economic matters like the stock market and shit like that. But he mm-hmm. has no problem being a you know a radical idiot on any of the other stuff that to me matters almost as much if not more than many of, on these other issues that's all this vote pandering it's not like he actually holds any of those values unless there's something else that you're talking about specifically understand that shit that he's preaching is just repeating the buzzwords that are spoken into his ear by his earpiece oh no i'm i'm definitely sure there's a lot of stuff like that that happens but if this is the guy that they say is not that far left and these are his actions and mm-hmm. it's I don't care what happens, you know, go um you you guys can lose your job and go make solar panels. It's like where's my <laughs> solar panel factory? It's it's learn to code all over again. It's you know, liberal elite people that live in cities that don't know what it's like to live not right next to their work that don't that don't work union jobs don't do anything like that to think unions are all cool and great and push and all this kind of shit when in reality our American unions suck right now there are some that are good no doubt but there's a lot of them that are just like are you know the union head makes 250k a year and the workers in the union make you know jack and or shit and the union head cares more about you know money and keeping work going than actually protecting the union and that's why we have absolutely shitty things right now where they these you know just in general like, I don't know if you're following the Hunts Point um, thing going on in New York. Hunts Point? No, I don't know anything about it. So it's a strike of, of unionized um, workers at the largest grocery, not grocery, but um, uh, like produce facility in America, maybe the world. And all they're at, they, the, the union has kept them working without demanding any concessions over the fact that like, you know, New York was like zombie land with the COVID and they like the population of the union there, like quite literally had uh, like 10 people die and 400 people catch it. Well, they, they finally decided to, they finally decided to strike and then the union, you know, and they're like, we just want a dollar an hour raise. And the union 
the union heads were going like, debate. We, we don't need to take that. No, you guys need to stop your strike. Come on, guys. Why are we striking? You know, and so it's, they, it's it's absolutely useless. Yeah, the unions are working against the union. Like this is why, like coll- like like Tim Pool always says on his shit, right. collective yeah. bargaining is good. You know, yeah. but um, and, like I've done that shit too. Like most people haven't. I have collectively bargained. I got an entire store that I was working for willing to quit because they were getting ripped off. I sat everybody yeah. down. I showed how much more money the store was bringing in, how many more customers we were all having to serve, and that we weren't seeing another fucking dollar in like two years. So I brought the the fucking uh, district manager into the store. We sat down and we talked about the numbers and everything. And I told him that everybody on the team was going to quit if we didn't all get a raise. We all got a raise, and I got a promotion. So collective nice. bargaining, is fucking sweet. But unions are generally fucking horrible because it's just another way to give somebody power and they're going to abuse that power. Might as well just be a politician. Right. I mean, and that's what the, that's what they turn into. Mm-hmm. And then and now you're saying like these unions are doing nothing but just screwing over their people. And <clears throat> I'm like, I'm not anti-union. Like I'm anti-union in the way that the unions sit right now. Right. right? The unions as as yeah, but like the un the unions the way we all sit right now just suck. Is as sad as that is, they they have become just as politically corrupt as. It's because it's not an actual union of equals. It's the powerful and the non-powerful. Like it's almost like the people themselves need to form a union against the union. Yeah, I mean, and uh, like, and that's why, like, as much as I like unions, I, I'm in, I'm in way in favor of the whole right to work thing because I don't think people should be forced into unions because all, like, a lot of unions I've seen they just like if you make uh, thirty bucks an hour, you're in a union, you're actually making forty five bucks an hour, but the union is taking fifteen off the top. Right. So it's like, wait, what's the point? And now, if if that you union money, like, you can get money. providing well. In some cases, that union is providing health care, that union is doing this. And in some trade jobs, you know, like if you're an electrician and, you know, you don't necessarily, a lot of companies don't just straight up hire electricians. So basically it turns that it, your company is the union. Um, so unions have turned into companies in a lot of cases where they're, they're just talent agencies that put out skilled uh, laborers. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Like, my main problem with unions is that they still use power to uh, hurt the little guy, basically. I I know you guys know stuff like this, but, like, the the minimum wage laws were originally intended to keep out competition from labor markets. Like, that's bullshit. Well, they were also originally intended to keep children out, but it's... (laughs) out of the labor force. I mean, the Uh, minimum uh, wage conversation is is also just absolutely ridiculous to begin with. But it's one of those things where, oh man, oh, we kind of got off track, but yeah. I I think these unions are these, the least the union (laughs) workers, especially this next go round, outside of the heavily politicized unions like teachers unions and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, which are just an absolute joke. I don't, I don't like public sector unions. Public sector yeah. unions are dumb. Um, but the uh, I don't think the trades unions are going to vote Democrat again for a long time. Assuming that the Republicans pull their head out of their ass and stop having Mitch right. McConnell be the head of the party, I think Ted Cruz is trying to pull himself up as heir apparent. Po- in the post-Trump world, right. um, and it's going to take all the populist positions and be like, you know, not necessarily pro-union, but not necessarily, but like he's going to be more pro-industry because you. Yeah. What's the point of having a union if your union can't do business? Like if you're a miner, or you know, you make automobiles or something like that. Yeah. Any final thoughts, Kyle? I was actually just going to ask you if you have any thoughts about unions, Jacob. I don't think you uh, chimed in on that one. I'm indifferent, to be honest. Uh, Fair enough. 
I don't really. I mean, because like you know, I've worked in places like FedEx isn't unionized and things were pretty chill for the most part. I could actually just work my way up on my own individualistic. But you know, I mean, it just depends. You know, I mean, Pepsi and Coke are unionized and they're not really complaining. But you know, it just depends on uh on I guess where you work at really. So. I don't know. Well, yeah, like I have a friend who works with a bunch of idiots that are all unionized and she can't get advanced past the idiots because they have seniority over her. Yep. And, and the union is the path of the incapable. Okay, well, anyways, let's talk about what's happened on Wall Street. Does anybody want to talk about that and bring it up and stonks, give a good summary? Stonks, stonks, stonks. stonks. Let's do it. So the, the best way to describe this is is with two parallel tracks. One, over the coronavirus things, the federal government has been pumping an absolute shit ton of money into the stock market, and it's inflated several stocks. GameStop, for example, is was not worth the forty dollars that uh, it was valued at, it, at least in its current state, when this whole thing started. Right, uh, so and it dropped its low. GameStop was overpriced. GameStop was overpriced. So oh. things like shorting aren't necessarily bad, right? Because it, and, and, and you know that's like left and right kind of agree on this. Like some speculation in the market is okay because you can be like, oh, this company has you know done uh, maneuvers on the stock market to heavily overvalue their stock price in order to make money. Like they could have spent a bunch of money to buy back stocks, to drive up the price, to then sell it, to make money, things like that. Or they can be super overvalued. So that's when speculators will go in and they'll be like, I'm going to take shorts out on this because this company, I think this company is about to crash because they're not doing so good. Well, that's basically what happened with GameStop. But the thing that really sucks is when collectively hedge funds gather together and then they short, you know, 75, 80, and in, and in GameStop's case, 100 and something percent of the freaking market. And then that, because when people see, oh, God, this company has so much shorted, that creates a panic and people sell their shit off and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, huh. which is where the SEC is supposed to get involved and be like, you you guys you guys can't be going on the air and talking about this and and all those kind of things but they still do. Jim Cramer did an interview like 15 years ago where he talked about how they weren't the hit when he worked at a hedge fund, he did a whole bunch of shit that wasn't legal but the SEC doesn't do their fucking job. So nobody really cared or listened to it and they just did what they wanted to. Right, of so course. that's why it's super funny when you see these hedge fund billionaires going on like see it cnbc and all that and then they say things like oh you know the hospital industry or the hotel during covid the hotel industry is dead dead i tell you and then turns out that the hedge fund that that guy was working for was fucking shorting all of the hotels and the next thing you know they made billions of dollars as that as the short came in but was it what he was shorting it or did he buy it all up after it crashed uh, I mean, it, it doesn't not, matter not. when you short something, you still end up with the stock at the end of it, right? You've just made the difference. So you can, it, you know, you can buy all the stock at the end, you can have the stock at the end. And now for a super cheap price, you now own 80% of fucking, you know, Walgreens. Um, right. Uh, but things like that still happen where these people will go, these billionaires will go on TV and, and cause a furor, and the SEC was supposed to do something about it, won't. So then, but in GameStop's case, these companies had shorted over 100, had shorted 140% of it, which basically would drive GameStop in to bankruptcy. So Reddit, people on Wall Street bet, saw this and was like, bro, if we just all go buy the GameStop stock, we can push up the price and we can make a lot of money. And then it slowly collectively turned into this thing where it's like, oh, we've driven up the price. And then everybody has seen just how rigged the game was as soon as the whole, you know, people were still, were still willing to sell out of their stuff. And then the game, the Robin Hood thing happened and then it turned into, you know what, fuck you, we have diamond hands, we're not selling anymore. 
and and it t- it's turned into this political movement where people are like, yeah, I, I don't I don't care if I lose the three hundred bucks I bought this for. Fuck you, right. you know. Now there's, there's millions of people that have bought, you know, one. Yeah, it's just fucking the system, um, and it's screwing over the billionaires because only like eight percent of the shorts have been. Uh, the shorted positions have been taken away. People are still shorting the GameStop stock, which is no. hilarious because I don't think they understand the sheer hatred that the that the average person has, and will and just like YOLO is something that hedge funds people don't uh, know. <laughs> right? Yeah, they don't understand but, the concept of eh, fuck it. What's two hundred dollars? But you know, to them, it's uh eh, fuck it. You know, it, it's like they're they literally have billions of dollars wrapped up into this, and they can lose massive amounts of money on this. And to me, that's just hilarious. Yeah, the idea of watching somebody that's been fucking us over for years look at their account and just have it be empty. <laughs> it's, uh justice. I you know that is justice. It's orgasmic. Yes. <laughs> but um. it's, to me, it's just super funny. Now, there are some definite ramifications, and, and we can get to that in a, in a, in a minute. But I, I think one of the things that you see people waking up to, especially in our generation, is the media lying. Because most of us are like, oh, yeah, this is cool. Like, wait, why are you calling these guys alt-right neo-Nazis saying that, oh... It was a fucking neo-Nazi attack on Jews on on a Jewish hedge fund on Holocaust Memorial Day. What the fuck are you talking about? And then we see them lying about the whole silver thing. It's like nice then, try blaming Reddit on being alt writers when Reddit got rid of the fucking Trump page. Like, yeah, no. Yeah. You're wrong. Like, no, this is a fucking cross-party non-political movement. But it really just shows how the media elites are only protecting the media elites or the other elites, right? Because Wall Street, you know, you worked with the media to get Trump to get Trump out of office because Wall Street didn't like the fact that under him small businesses were booming, that meaning they would have competition. And they also didn't like the fact that he was waging a trade war with China, which would also mean that they, you know, they wouldn't be making as high of profits, which is why we got into the issue with China to begin with, because these Wall Street idiots and big corporation idiots thought it was more important to get the highest profit margin possible instead of keeping Americans employed. And Trump wasn't about that life. Right. So it's, yeah, to me, this whole thing is hilarious. <clears throat> You have I wonder this- how long it's going to keep going on. Like, are we going to see the GameStop bubble pop soon, or do you think it's going to keep rising inherently because of how many people still have it short? Like, I don't games? necessarily. I'm not sure, but my big thought is that because it's um, it's holding steady right now, so like the the people that were were going to get out of it have already gotten out of it and stuff like that. Um, that were just doing it for money have they've gotten out, which is fine. You know, people are more than yeah. more than entitled to do that shit for money. And yeah, you know, gonna do. yeah it, it, cool, good for you. But I, at this point, <laughs> I think the rest of the people that are that are holding on to the stock are like, we're sending a message. Yeah, fuck <laughs> them. You know, because yeah, they're they, all there, Dude, put in a million dollars today, knowing that he's probably going to lose it on the stock, even though it was like his life savings. Like, Wall Street does not understand what they're up against. Yeah, I mean, and, but that's that's half the point, right? You have um, these, you have people remaining that they could make a shit ton of money right now if they gave in and sold. They're not gonna do it. They're not they're gonna give it. They're not giving their riches to fuck over the system. Like that is one of the most admirable things I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, I mean, after twenty million retire, and they're just sitting there laughing, watching the rich elites cry. These people oh, yeah. that have oh, 
yeah. their entire lives are deciding to remain poor to fuck over the system. And well, that it's is also literally- a lot. A lot of people like if you only bought one or two stocks of it, right? Mm-hmm. And you're sitting there like, okay, you might only make like a couple hundred dollars. And you that's the I- difference between putting dinner on the table for some people. No, no, I I agree, but I'm just saying like. For for some people, it's you know it's like you know if I sell this, I might I would make just only a little bit of money. But if I keep this, I can be part of a, of a movement that's collectively <clears throat> flipping the middle of the finger to the people that crashed the economy in '08. Right. Like you know, so me. there's millions of people that are holding on to this shit, right? Yeah, yeah, you're you're pay, you're paying them back, and yep. that's the most American fucking thing that I have ever seen. I think so too. Uh, as soon as I they were fucking over the hedge funds and how it was basically looking like a revolution, it just clicked instantly. It was like, holy shit, this is it. This is the second revolution that we've been needing. It's the financial revolution. We've had the socialists talking about financial redistribution for years. It's like, shut the fuck up, sit down, let the people who know what they're doing handle this. And now Reddit has stepped up and they're ruining everything for the rich people. And it's fucking beautiful. And the socialists are just like, oh, we like that because it's ruining the rich people. And the conservatives are like, we like that because it's not using the government. And it's just... No, everybody- it's also like, we like that because uh, what they're doing is in a free market. And conservatives outside of the fucking, the, the Republicans that get into power. And this is why personally I kind of like I, I don't like the GOP in, in what it's become. Um, oh God! Because you know, because they they're they they're just as much to blame for the crony capitalism stuff as the Democrats are in a lot of cases because they refuse to regulate mar- the market speculation. They refuse to do anything when they got into power after the 08 financial collapse. And I, I put more responsibility they, on the Republicans for that happening. Than the Democrats, I I think they're more uh, morally at fault for that because if you're living inside a castle and there's supposed to be guards at the gate keeping the enemies outside, theoretically the enemies being the Democrats, the Republicans at the gate are just letting them in behind our backs. They are betraying us and calling us or calling themselves our saviors. Well, that's yeah, worse. I mean, and that's why you know I I think there I think there are still are some good Republicans like. I think Holly's a good dude. I think Ted Cruz has came around, but Mitch also a McConnell, good Democrat. who Close Ted together. Cruz, no, a good Democrat. oh yeah, Close there together. there are some good Democrats, but the, you know they get forced to vote lockstep with Nancy Pelosi, or they get their political careers ruined. Yep. Um, but that's why, not a that's why I like personally, like I'm I'm super super pro that whole idea that trump was floating of like a patriot party where it's like mm-hmm. we're not left we're not right we're pro america if that means taking ideas from the liberals and we'll do it we just want what's best for america you know what i mean and mm-hmm. i'm like i'm totally good on that because honestly there are some things that the fucking right does that i think is stupid i like i don't think that you know big businesses should be able to take up too much fucking market cap i you know then you have the then you create oligopolies and then you create you know like inadvertent fascism as the fucking as basically the world and the country has to bow to these corporations that control too much shit you know it's yeah, instead of competition it's it's not competition it's controlled competition and that's not a free market you know, and that that was caused by good old boy Reagan. And everybody's mm-hmm. like, oh, you can't say anything bad about my Reagan. It's like, okay, bro, well, your Reagan is the one that cut off the fucking, that um, stopped us from, you know, being able to regulate down businesses and cut down their fucking market share uh, and yeah. shit like that. So, no, he wasn't perfect. But, yeah, uh, it's. Mm-hmm. I forgot where I was going other than oh yeah, like saying like yeah I think just like the Whigs got destroyed back in the day and the Republicans were birthed from them because you know nothing can kill the Democrats because they're too corrupt and won't allow anything else 
uh, any new ideas in. I think personally that uh, a third party, like the Tea Party, was a good idea, but they worked within the Republican bounds. I think a third party backed by Trump would would be amazing. Um, but I also think that it would result in Democrat control of of the presidency for a decade. Good. Uh, unless you had, um, unless Trump runs again, but then he actually decides to be much more selective about how uh, who he backs in a lot of these, uh, um, like he backed people in primaries and shit for senators and whatnot that mm -hmm. were old school Mitch McConnell bad Republican because yeah, he was trying to get Mitch McConnell's help. On well, uh, he, he backed them over other Republicans in primaries because Mitch, you know, he was trying to get the establishment Republicans to yeah. work with him more. Because I don't know Very if, you, it, it, yeah, I don't know if y'all remember the first two years of Trump's um, presidency, but he had uh, the house, a house that tried to do a lot of the shit that he wanted to. But Mitch McConnell in the Senate said no, and then as soon as he lost the House, Mitch McConnell was finally willing to do things. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like... Yeah, he's a perfect representation of what I was talking about, of the Republicans fucking us over, telling us that they're our friends. But to the whole idea of Democrats winning the presidency for the next 10 years, the reason I say good is because that is on the Republicans. They are 100% responsible if that happens. Daddy's home. It's time to pay the Pied Piper. They fucked up. Exactly. They do not get to be in power anymore. We are going mm. to suffer under democratic rule because of them. They're going to sit exactly. there and go, no, you're going to keep us in power so you don't have to suffer under the Democrats. F fuck you. It's done. Right. I'm not going to play their fucking game anymore and pretend that they're my friend just because they have an R next to their name. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I think there are a bunch of states and a bunch of political leaders that would view, honestly view, like, themselves immediately more as Patriot Party members than Republicans to begin with. Like, most of the people in Texas, I could imagine, outside of a few, like that guy that got caught paying, that one Republican that got, got caught paying yep. somebody to fucking um, ballot harvest for Joe Biden and him. For the Democrats, you know, it was yeah. like he was the only Republican getting ballot harvested off of that, and the rest were Democrats. Yeah, like, and uh, and I mean because that those are the old Lincoln Project people that all they care about <laughs> is corporate profits and shit like that. And the like, it's like, bro, there's a new party for you. It's called the Democrats because all they care about is corporate profits too. Yep. Do you think that if we do have a third party that? it would just remain Democrat power? Or do you think that the left would split up as well? Like, do you think that the far left people would take the opportunity and go, hey, now that the Republicans are split, we have the opportunity to split as well, and it won't guarantee a Republican win? Um, I don't know. I, I think... Split. That's the only way it would work. I don't, but. I don't... Well, so I, I don't think the Democrats would split because the Democrats are too corrupt to allow shit to happen. Like they they are very good at doing things like forcing the Green Party off of ballots so people can't even vote for the Green Party, um, things like that. But what I think would happen is is for uh, the presidency, if there was two right or center right, you know, a Patriot Party and the Republicans, they would do primaries together and then back one presidential candidate. Kind of the same way that you get collaboration governments in, um, like the UK and shit like that, where no one party actually has a majority. So yeah. parties that are similarly like minded will work together to vote. You know, I I think something like that would happen. Um, but I'll also like I I don't fucking want that to happen. I want the Republicans. I want the old school fucking like Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham Republicans, like 
a lot of like the people from fucking you know that you see that are like oh no let's sell our trade out man type of people to get crushed i want them gone i want them in fucking out of political power because I don't, I, it's like I don't care your stance on abortion. Because there's no difference that, between Republicans and Democrats on the economy, other than their stance on you know anymore. It's their stance on abortion. So we need mm-hmm. to actually have a party that's you know it's global. It, it's really coming down to like, are you for the working class and you know like nationalists not you know helping america not get screwed over or are you for yourself like what like I heard you pull away what from the word nationalist a little bit can we stop pretending nationalism is a bad word oh i don't think nationalism no, is a bad word anymore. we're kind of treated like it is like you, you know that you can't go outside and go hey i'm a nationalist because everybody will think you're a racist that needs to stop now we need to well, take right it's, just, it's just the connection between, you know, the word nationalism and the National Socialist Worker Party of Germany. Okay, then why doesn't socialism have such a dirty connotation with it in America today? Because the left is con- the the left controls all of the cultural institutions that fucking determine what we think is good and bad. Right, that's, but I mean, that's, it's not that's, just that nationalism was in the Nazi party because so. Socialism was also in the Nazi party. So it's not just because right. it was... Well, I mean, and that's and always had... my response to anybody that says, oh, nationalism is, on, is a, you know, means you're right wing. I'm like, so were the Soviets right wing? Because they right. were nationalists. That was the whole Stalin versus Trotsky thing. Stalin was a much more, you know, national socialist slash communist. And Trotsky was a, we need to focus on the worldwide rebellion type of commie. And that's why they didn't like each other. Yeah, so you know. the American socialists would be a little bit more like Trotsky, it seems. Because it seems like oh, they, yeah, they are global power, not national power. Do you but ever I think they watch Jimmy Dore? I love Jimmy Dore. I would do anything. Did you watch... Um, for an hour. Oh, dude, like... I don't like his socialist shit, but like, I'm like, okay, well, he's at least super pro worker. Like, I would rather have him be the representation of the left than than fucking Nancy Pelosi. The thing is, he's fair, incredibly honest. So I can disagree with him, and it's like, oh, we disagree. Anyway, you want to go grab a drink? Yeah, like he's an actual human instead of just a fake statue pretending to be something else. Like, right, I mean, you. and that's why, like, I don't, I'm, I'm completely with him on the, yeah, I think AOC's full of shit. Yeah. Like, I used to watch him on the Young Turks when I was a good little socialist. Now I freaking hate all of the Young Turks, and so does well, he. Well, so does he. Yeah. I wonder what happened there that made somebody like Jimmy Dore and somebody like me both come to an agreement on the Young Turks. Uh, that's because Chank Huger is a fucking vapid sellout. Oh, uh, oh yeah, lefty he's stuff he's is good, but y'all can't off. unionize in my office because it would it would ruin you know the profitability of this. It's like, oh yeah, you mean like that's what the right has been saying the whole time? But and it's he, different you know, when he does it because he's the good guy and he needs to be in power. Yeah, as we know, they, which is just is just such typical, you know, liberalism in a fucking nutshell. It's lack of self accountability. Look in the mirror Sheet and, and cow. So. Quick question. Since we're about, you know, I think at this point, eleven days in to Mr. Baden uh, mm-hmm. and his term as a president, has has what you probably thought what was predicted to happen overall in his presidency changed after this first week or so? No, or not at all. Is it everything that you've expected it to be? Oh, it's everything that I expected it to be. Yeah, it wasn't exactly a hard prediction to make. <laughs> Democrats are surprised that he's doing all of the things that he said he was going to do. It's like, 
Yeah, hey. I I expected him to ban fracking. He did that. I expected him to do the Keystone Pipeline thing. He did that. I expected him to put troops back in Syria. He did that. You want to know why I expected him to do all this shit? Because it's what he and the Democrats have been saying the whole fucking time. It's also what the establishment bullshittery has been saying, that we need to have troops in the Middle East for fucking perpetuity. And it also only makes sense to me that if these people want to cut the oil supply um, in America, that they're going to have to get it from somewhere. And the only other place that we'd be willing to get it from is by invading and slaughtering Muslims in order to steal their fucking oil. So all of the people that are like, oh, the Democrats are the peace ones. It's like, no, in fact, they're the global interventionists. Mm -hmm. Say the peace words so that they can go commit the murders and then you won't care because you're a bad person. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, what? Clinton invaded Yugoslavia. He also had dealings in Africa. Um, Obama Bosnia? went... Uh, Bosnia too. Well, that's that's that was all a part of the Yugoslavia stuff. Because right. Bosnia was a part of Yugoslavia, wasn't it? I don't know. I'm not as good on my Balkan nations as I should be. Um, <laughs> I don't think anybody is. I mean, they are. They care about them quite a bit. Um, I went in the Balkans since the First World War, so... Yeah. <laughs> Goddamn. Fucking Serbia! <laughs> um, oh, they man. gave us the Nazis and global communists a threat. Those fucking assholes. Uh, shot fans for demand. What do you think, guys? What do you think is the trajectory for the next, let's say, year? How do you think twenty twenty one is going to end up, especially with, you know, all, all this political turmoil, et cetera, et cetera? You know, hitting on the hey. last topic before we move on to the next one. The one thing I am surprised about is that Biden is actually still alive. He's made it an entire eleven oh, days. Right. I'm He's Biden not going to be done. He's not going to be done until two years and one day into his term. Oh, yeah. You think that too? Because I was wondering. That, that. 10 years yeah. have come up. Because, exactly. They're, they're going to vote for me because I'm the first black, you know, um, an Indian woman for president. <laughs> and, so, you know, uh, and people oh, are going to do it. Like, I've met people. <laughs> I have. One of my buddy's wife posted this thing about Kamala Harris that, like, we've made history. And I'm like, she's a horrible fucking human being. And, like, that's coming from my lefty side that absolutely and utterly hates her for the fact that she, you know, imprisoned black people in mass in California, you know, for harmless crimes and then laughed about it and then kept them in past their term. So, like, why does it matter that she's a black, whatever woman, if she's horrible? And then, like, the person was like, I had no idea about her record. Well, I just still think it's good that we're making progress. Like, how is that progress to put somebody that's corrupt and horrible into office? That's not progress. It's not progress because just because the color you of your skin matters more than anything else. <laughs> that's racist. And I'm like, and I'm like, I, I do. It's one of my buddy from the Navy's wife, and he's like, he, um, he has on more than one occasion uh, told me that he didn't, you know, that, like, he's like, bro, try not to talk to my wife about politics because she thinks she knows stuff. And I've told her that you know a lot of stuff, to, so to not bring it up. And she's like, well, if he knows things, then we should get along. And he's just like, you don't understand. He will take your position about things and people on the left and fucking crush it. Yeah, like because she's also an AOC fan, and I'm like, oh, oh god. god, anybody that's an AOC fan, like I like from the left or right, I will crush your fucking soul. Yeah, like just <laughs> watching videos of her, like even her live streams and everything. I watched for like half an hour the other day, and just watching her try to formulate a thought is incredible. It looks like a sixth grader giving a presentation in class. But then she just like says the basic stupid fucking buzzwords and all the other fucking drooling idiots clap and cheer. And they're like, oh my god, she's so smart because she agrees with me and I'm smart. Shut the fuck up. 
Oh my god, she's so attractive. I'm like, okay, yeah, she's like an a seven. But Steve. she she looks like a fucking horse. <laughs> I mean she not, would be hot. It'd be hotter if you couldn't see the obvious mental illness in her eyes. Like, she obviously has something wrong with her, which probably goes back to her childhood. I'm not a doctor, don't take anything I say seriously, but she's obviously fucking crazy. I've dated plenty of girls with crazy eyes. I know what's inside those eyes. Well, she's also lied about, like, her collect or her conditions growing up so many times that, to me, it's hilarious. Sandy Cortez lied? No. Is that her actual name? Uh, she went by Sandy as a child. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> our my father died when we were young. We had to move. It's like, oh, wait. When you really look into it, it's like she had to move from one rich area to another rich area because her father changed jobs and didn't want to commute anymore. Yeah, but I bet the heated seat on her new toilet didn't get quite as warm. I think it's funny how all of these, it's always the rich kids that are like, or, you know, the upper middle class, the lower upper class that are like, we need socialism. It's like, bro, you know what? You haven't worked a day in your fucking life. It's because so they're on it. the bottom of the world that they observe. They're obsessed with the celebrity lifestyle because they have nothing else in their basic mindless NPC drones. So when they say, when they see the rich people that they look up to and they see those people as happy, which obviously is not true. And these people are inherently depressed because so is everyone else. And they think that the money that those rich people have is the key to their happiness. But well, then, right. But it's also a bunch of people, people that like... When you, when you, hungry people that are probably on average actually happier than the average middle class American. Yeah, they don't even... What's super, to begin to think about why. Like, like, psychologically, what you, you think about, like, People in that tier of the economy, so like upper middle class and lower upper class, that is the whole, okay, this is where hard work can get you. The upper yeah. upper class is like fucking blind luck and, you know, genetic genius type of thing. And a shitload of hard work generally. Uh, in a lot of cases, right? But like... If you're the son of a billionaire investor and, you know, they didn't lose their money and all you did is be like, yes, keep doing the same thing. Like, that's that's a little bit different. Um, right. And I definitely agree. And I want to expand on something there, though, because I think this is a point that never really gets hit. Yeah. That kid who inherited a billion dollars from his dad. Fuck him. I don't give a shit about him. I don't care what he does with his money. It does not matter. I don't care that he didn't deserve his money. What was deserved is that father that worked his ass off to get that billion dollars can do whatever the fuck he wants with it. And if what he wants to do is to give it to his spoiled, rotten son, in my opinion, that's a bad move. He has the right to do that. And we can't sit there and be like, well, that person shouldn't have the money because that's saying that that father shouldn't have been able to give his hard earned money to his son. And I think that that's a valid premise. No, I don't, I don't disagree. And, and, but what I'm, all I'm trying to get at is, that there are certain cases where it's not necessarily hard work. But in most cases, it is still hard work that will get you there. And mm. when you look at these people, like the AOCs, they look at the hard work that their parents probably had to do, putting in all kinds of hours at the, at the, um, in their job, and they're, they're like, uh, I don't want to do that. But it's like, okay, well, you're going to have to do that in order to maintain the type of lifestyle you want. And then th those are the ones that you see that are like, Communism, communism, communism. I don't want to. I shouldn't have to work if I don't want to. You don't. Know, you rarely ever see like middle class kids going, "Yay, socialism!" You see them going, "Yay, how about a little bit more welfare?" You know, because that was kind of useful growing up. But like, you know, you don't see the the same shit that you do from these um, upper class fucking uh, people. You just don't. Deserve it alls. That's my new word for them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's because, like, you... They saw something more obtainable. Like, the middle class people, like, saw something more obtainable, right? They saw that hard work can pay off, and it's not like they lived in the lap of luxury, but then these kids that lived in the lap of luxury, they are like, no, we want it, and we want it now. And those like, okay, who well, fucking good luck. 
That's okay. the time. Uh, Awkward silences, yay. No, I couldn't hear what you said. I was saying, say that one more time. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Um, I don't even remember what I said. Let's move on. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to point out something. I was just looking up, and the first th- I was just going online for a little bit, and the first thing that popped up was a story of a teacher saying that Bernie Sanders wearing his coat and gloves is- epitomizes white privilege. Yep, uh, that too. The media is the media is slowly going, and social media are going to be turning on the left. Oh, what's wrong, Bernie? Did you ignite a movement that's now lighting you on fire? Oh, poor social there. No, 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 no. So hold on, hold on, hold on. This is this is something beyond that. And okay. and I have I have a good explanation. You just let me kink it out for a second, right? The the uh, media elites use identity politics as a weapon. Right? They really do. And the media elites also simultaneously will um, have been trying to get rid of, you know, and this is social media, normal media, all this stuff. They've been trying to get rid of their competition in the political political realm. So they started with the easiest uh, target that you can have, which is obviously the right. That's why they purge the right, and then they think that they finally won. They've won the final battle with against the right when they beat Trump. So what they have, the this is while the left has been a you know, basically a useful ally in the fight against the right. Now mm-hmm. they're going to be coming back against them in order to try and bring them back to center. So the first thing they have to do is go after their hero, the Ber- Bernie Sanders. Hmm. It's because almost like I, the, the Soviet Revolution. Didn't they come for like the professors and intellectuals first? Yeah, they, supported- you go yeah. after people that are able to disagree with you. Right. That's so the the first people to go after were the right, and then you have to, that, which is n- the first part of the revolution is to go after the enemy, and then the hmm. second part of the revolution is to go hmm. after those within your own party that, um. That stood that are you can say stood against your your ability to get to where you want to faster. That was the that was the two revolutions in the October Revolution. The first revolution was against the monarchy, and the second revolution, which February October, um, was against the uh, the liberals. Mm-hmm. Right, it, it was against the people that um, wanted democracy instead of socialism. So, yeah, that's, and, but now, so these people, and it's also, like, very fasci- fascistic propaganda-y, um, and always makes me giggle when people call the fascist right-wing, but, like, the slow, li- slow whittling away of all counter-thought, yeah, that doesn't sound, fa- you know, via fucking force, um, that doesn't sound, you know, very left, you know, very good to me i guess is the best way to say it but mm. it's it, it, which is what the left right now is doing yeah that sounds really fucking fascist oh that's right that's because it is yeah uh and it's it's just super funny because like like I, I was having this argument the other day with somebody and they're like well the the internet says fascism is the right wing and then they like posted a definition and I'm like, okay, um, here, let me quote the father of fascism to you about how it's a new form of socialism that uses corporate power to basically have oligopolies because that's the easiest way to get, you know, an efficient system while having workers have the best possible outcome for themselves. Yeah. Yes, because socialism and government control of the economy totally sounds the only difference between socialism and com in fascism or or you know communism and fascism is the fact that the government outright owns the means of production in the other two whereas in fascism they still let it be a private entity and let there be some co- you know competition except for it's just competition against heavyweights instead of having a whole bunch of different people in the ring it's competition um, amongst those who will swear fealty to the crown. Yeah, it's basically right. like the removal of all small business 
um, and replacing it with all large business. Yeah. That, that, that is what... Establishment. Yeah, and I mean, that that is what is going on with them, just hands down, bar none. So, like I said, it always makes me, that stuff always just makes me giggle whenever I get into that argument. They're like, fascism is right wing, man. And it's like, I can prove to you with source material that says it was a radical left movement. Because in Germany, you had the fucking communists and the fascists fighting each other against the people that were just kind of whatever liberals. And that's what led to the Reichstag fire. Hmm. Which, you know, put Hitler in power. Right. Gentlemen, I mean, anything of, else? I was just going to add on that the uh, the rating of the capital, that whole thing, that smells a little bit like Reichstag fire to me. It seems a little oh, yeah. bit like antique, oh, yeah, uh, antagonist. There were no, people that have been arrested that definitely were Antifaites that were yeah, dressed up as Trump supporters. Name, John something. Yeah, there were people that have been, you know, like those types of people. It's 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 a complete farce, and I I I think the one thing that they didn't expect to happen is people to still, you know, be on Trump's team afterward, and there still are a bunch. Like Trump's approval rating is higher than Biden's. Yeah, no surprise. You know what? It, Gentlemen, anything else you guys want to talk about? Any topics you want to discuss? Um, not off the top of my head. I, I think I'm about ready to go to the bathroom, though. So if we're about to end this, I think it's a good time. Um, did we get to all the, the big picture items? Genuinely? I think oh, the only thing... The last the thing, and this is just irony, this is my thing. So I was I was reading the newspaper. The Democrats are still trying to push um, for universal mail-in voting for the next set of, for the foreseeable future for the rest of the elections. Mm -hmm. uh, and they want to push. They're trying to push for um, basically never being able to purge voter rolls. Never. Effectively not having any election security whatsoever uh, at all. Uh, and, you know, not being able to reject votes and automatically reg registering people. And to me, this just screams of being able to cover your tracks when you, when you steal an election again. Right, it's like right? we still want to screw you over. Oh, yeah. We don't want to get in trouble doing it. <laughs> Right, because a lot of the ways that you can, that they're limited when they're trying to win elections, um, you know, inappropriately, is when, you know, oh, we can't, well, we can't print more ballots than there are voters, right? Well, so we well voters. If, if everybody in a state is forced onto the register at 18, that gives you a whole lot more shit, right? Uh, um, but it's just kind of really on the nose that it's like, Hey guys, and and it's something like that. I think if they try and push that nationwide, uh, one I don't think would make it through the court system because you know states would fucking challenge that and put a stop to it. But if something like that did pass through, I I, I think that would be the end of America. That would one be the end of the republic, and two I definitely think you know people would just be like, hey, we're we're not in America. We're we're seceding. We're not in America anymore. You can't you know, basically take away the security of an election and expect us to stay in a democracy with you. Yeah. I was just going to say, y'all need to get to Texas before we secede. Yeah. Uh, can you guys cool your fucking jets until 2022? So that way I don't have to try and immigrate there from California. Dude, it's already fucking insane. Like all, all the, all the customers that I work with, they're all, like, oh my god, there's so many Californians moving here. It's like, yeah, that's why we're here, so we can move them in. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's already getting out of control, the amount of Californians that are here. Texas is already mad at us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but I mean, when I come, and I'm going to come, like, waving... I, I saw my favorite pro-Trump flag recently, and it was the one... Huh? That, it's not, like, Republican or even saying Trump 2020, but it's red, white, and blue striped with a fucking lion insignia on it. Nice. Mm. So, we'll see. I think 
I, I think things will simmer down unless the Democrats decide to try and screw over another election. But <laughs> I, 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 I think we're in I think we're in bleeding Kansas right now. And I think yeah. it's it's not gonna be this war isn't gonna be fought over you know, the this quote unquote civil war won't be over slavery, won't be over stuff like that. It's gonna be over like shit like election security. Yeah. You know, because how the fuck can you, you know, why does a state that, say a state that requires um, voter ID, why should they be forced to be in a republic with where states that can basically band together and win themselves choose to have no election security? Right. That's not fair We're to not that state. Anymore. You're going to keep fucking screwing us. Yeah, and I mean, and it's yeah. it's kind of funny when you hear, ever you talk to you know liberal lefties about it. But they're like, "Well, everyone should be able to vote." I'm like, "So there should be no security?" Well, there's no proof of mail-in vote. I'm like, "Yeah, that was when it was small, and, and yeah. you know, that was when it was small and it was absentee, not when it was mass mail-in universal voting." Because guess what? We're like the only westernized nation that, you know, doesn't mandate voter ID, doesn't mandate whatever. And the ones that don't, you know, places like Switzerland, you want to know why they don't? Well, because it's impossible to get into their fucking country without their permission. Yeah, it's true. You know, that's that's why. That's because they know, like, it's. And it's illegal to it's it's a huge crime to illegally vote in a lot of these places. So yeah, bro, like this is ridiculous. Get your head out of the. Well, we can't. Poor black people won't be able to vote if we have this. I'm like, what do you mean? Poor black people won't be able to vote. Well, racists will just use it as a way to not let them vote. Then they can go to a different polling place or they can file complaints. But the kinks will get worked out. But you know, you know what won't get worked out. Somebody being able to mat, like print off a fucking voter registry, slap their names, run it through a computer and a fucking printer, and print out mil- like hundreds of thousands of ballots. Yeah. That's such because bullshit. Was- the idea that racism could keep polling places shut down. Like, like, let's just imagine that for a second. A polling place turns away a black guy because he's black. That guy then goes on Twitter and goes, "Look what this guy just did." Boom. Themselves. Yeah, dis- dis- oh, yeah discrimination. The racists are going to keep keep everyone down. It's like, look, I get that you're a racist deep inside, that you really want to keep those people down. Not everybody is as evil as you are. People oh yeah, actually I mean, don't. these people are just fucking, you know, absolute. Like uh, some of the most like actually racist comments that I have, um heard have come from people that claim to not be racist and that's the, that's not in just like the traditional like oh um you know oh the liberals are the real racist which i mean i think they are they because you know you don't push the neo segregationist propaganda if you're not some kind of actual racist like the whole you know white privilege thing is totally white supremacy wrapped with a, a, a sad face emoji. Yeah, totally. Oh, it's like, hey, let me explain why I'm superior to you. Yeah, let me finally yeah. get you to admit in, you know, it's I'm superior to you, and that's hurting you. I'm right. sorry. That's what it is. It's neo-segregationist fucking propaganda. Like somebody with a clan hood and a therapist voice. Horrible. Uh, yes. 100% yes. But and this, these are the type of people that we're giving political power to, and don't want to make make sure they can't sit. Like, oh yeah, no, you guys, we don't need to make sure that you fucking weirdos, um, can't cheat elections anymore. Like, oh, what? But it was super funny. Like, I read this, uh, um, pra- Prager from Dennis Prager did this article, and it made sense. Like. He was talking about the election, and basically he was like, okay, I'm not going to, you know, let's let's talk about this election and the irregularities. Like, for somebody to think that the election, you know, let's talk logically here. 
He's like, we're not going to talk about all of the, you know, circumstantial, statistical, and other um, anomalies that are, that have that are associated with all of this. Let's think in other aspects of this. If you are a Democrat and have been convinced by the media over the last four years that this is a fascist neo-Nazi dictator that's out to kill you, would it not be within your moral duty to try and keep him out of office in any way, shape, or form that you had to do? Mm -hmm. And because, like, if you were transported back in time, wouldn't you do what you could do in order to keep Hitler out of office? It's like, so the question is, is, you know, basically, like, there is no moral, moral, from, like, a weirdo, crazy Democrat's point of view, there is no morally objectionable thing um, wrong with cheating in an election. And in these cities, it's primarily Democrats that were running the polling places, and then they decided to kick everybody out, mm -hmm. right? So we have a lot of this circumstantial proof, and then if you're thinking rationally, you know, you would see that, okay, these people were driven into a media frenzy over the, uh, the last four years. Yeah, it actually makes sense that some of them would do crazy shit and go about right. um, <clears throat> do, doing the cheat shit in an election. That just literally just makes sense. But insane so, acts makes sense when you're insane. Yeah, so let's not sit here and be like, oh, there's no reason anybody would have actually, you know, uh, done that in an election. It's like, no, there's plenty of reason people would have done it. So let's yeah. not sit here and act like, you know, we didn't watch... Bernie Sanders gets screwed by the DNC. Let's sit here. Let's not sit here and act like that. We haven't watched the, uh, you know, all of the, like, these bad fucking elections and these things happen all of the time. Because guess mm. what? We have. We've seen it numerous times. But just because it happened to Trump and you're like, oh, evil Cheeto man dictator. Okay, well, that that doesn't make it any better. That that just means that you guys are willing to, um, you know, give way to your principles because orange man bad. I don't have principles. They don't, they don't have the ability to understand the concept of having principles, let alone actually having them. It's, no. it's antithetical to the political worldview. Like, they have to not have values because the only thing that they're in for is to win. You can't win every time and play by right. moral rules. Well, I th I think they have they have I don't necessarily uh, maybe you wouldn't call them principles, but mm. they have what they consider to be their moral foundation, but their moral foundation is so self-righteous that they e easily are able to justify any act that might not be itself morally sound to in it to actually be morally sound because they view themselves as the saviors right i was just gonna say they worship themselves as, as gods i really mean that i mean it, that's i wouldn't itself. say that's that's wrong you know be but it's 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 the whole thing of well the liberals are do as i say not as i do it's perfectly okay to do these things when we want to do it, but not when you want to do it. Yes, and great. It, I mean, and that's that's the mindset that um, a lot. I I believe a lot of these people have is where it's like, well, it's okay if we do it, even though we previously objected to this, because we're in the right here. Like we're trying to prevent. Mm -hmm genocide it's like no you're not trying to prevent genocide stop talking yourself up like that nobody's yeah. getting genocided except for in burma being paid for by biden right now ah. you know oh, that's horrible <laughs> yeah, any last you. thoughts gentlemen let's do this again soon yeah that sounds okay. like a plan Kyle, the walking embodiment of what it is to beat drywall you yes. actually have to start coming and recording so that way i have somebody to argue with we'll see. I, I should be able to get on it a little bit more frequently well because all wasabi does is is just you know gets me rolling on something and then just 
occasionally chimes in with questions, and I feel like this just turns into the the SME show. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'll probably be on a little bit more. All right, thank uh, you guys. Yeah. Your, your girlfriend soon. finally taking you off the leash. Oh no, she dumped me. She dumped you a while ago. Oof. Oh, oh, we'll have to talk about that off. But don't you feel like shit now? That was fucked <laughs> up. Thank I mean, honestly, I don't, but... Uh... <laughs> All right, for real, thank you guys for listening. If you guys like right. it, listen. If you don't, eat biscuits. You guys have a wonderful day. If you thank don't you. like it, eat Popeye's biscuits with no water. Oh.